Hello and welcome to Sport This Morning. I'm Cecilia Amogbe. Very good morning to you from wherever you're watching us. I'm Yemi Adebayo. This is the last edition of the show for the week and it promises to be an exciting one. Let's start you off uh, with the news making the rounds from this part of the world. And let's talk about this man ending the year um, in very good form. He's flying high. Nigeria's table tennis star, Harun Okondri, is is ranked 21, um, has moved to that position, still remains the best player in Africa. What a way to end uh, 2017 uh, for Nigeria's star man, Aruno Kodri. And of course, for Cristiano Ronaldo, expectedly, he is the king of Europe. It's been in the news since on Monday that it leaked that he would receive the Ballon d'Or award. And of course, last night, he was crowned the best player in Europe for the fifth time. That's a historic one for him, tying with Lionel Messi. All right, uh, congratulations to Cristiano Ronaldo, uh, of course, equally Lionel Messi. And this one, everyone talking about this game that's going to go down at the weekend, the battle uh, at Old Trafford, uh, talking about Manchester United and Manchester City, uh, the Manchester Derby. We're all expecting to see this big game, the managers, the players, all set to give us a cracker on Sunday. All right, so, um, but, but we're not starting with football. Uh, let, let me just go to CC. She's been following uh, this story for a while. Let's talk about 2018 Winter uh, Olympics. And for once, we're talking about Nigeria's participation in it, um, seeing dance steps, dance moves. And now the girls, uh, the Bob Slate team I'm referring to, and the girls talking about wanting a podium finish. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he's been in the news for a while now, and of course, we're also waiting for the official confirmation, which is going to be in January. But then, that's not to say that these girls, they've made a kind of a history. You know, the first African team, female team at that, they're going to uh, the bobsled at the Winter Olympics next year. It's really something that is really big, because we've never seen this before, especially with what the girls have been able to put into place. I mean, you just see... Some of them were former athletes. I mean, Sheon Adigun, Ungozi Owumeri, and of course, Akuma Omego. Three of them heading down, former athletes. Uh, I think one of them was actually at the All-African Games. The other one competed at the London 2012 Games and all that. They were not really too successful. But then, this around at the Winter Olympic Games, and you ask yourself, Nigeria, what's the connection? But these girls are based in the U.S., and they know what they have to do. They've been able to train all this while qualify for this championship. We just wish them all the best, because the way it started, started competing in South Korea, uh, that was in 2014, where Adigun, born in the United States, uh, a dream to start all the preparations, everything just turning out and working out for all these girls. Well, she was a former sprinter, talked about the fact that she competed in 100 meters hurdle at the London 2012 Games, but then later she had to recruit other uh, ladies, they are talking about the break woman, Owu Mary and Akuma Omego, to make their dream a reality. And today it is a reality. Well, I'll just stop talking now and just listen to these girls, how excited they are going to the Winter Olympic Games in South Korea. It's been beautiful to know that Nigeria is supporting us. They've never had anyone in the Winter Olympics, and they're excited to see that happen. Nigerians globally, people that are even non-Nigerian, you know, just being supportive of the fact that this country is going to get representation at the Winter Olympics, and the continent is going to get representation in the sport of bobsled. Um, it's still kind of an out-of-body experience right now. It's kind of surreal, you know, um, and, and I think that's just more so because, like, the official results for all the qualifiers comes out in January, but we're on, like, a very unique um, qualification to where as long as we had all the things that we needed to execute done, you know, we basically were punching our ticket to the games. And so it's, it's really kind of weird to, you know, come out and be like, yeah, we're going, because it's like you kind of want to wait to enjoy that opportunity in that moment with everyone else who's, who's also going to be qualified to go. Being a strength and power track and field athlete as sprinters, it transferred over quite nicely to bobsled because those are the, the main characteristics you have to have in order to move the sled um, as successfully as possible. First hand experience with bobsled was kind of like, what did I get myself into? <laughs> like I was kind of like, oh my gosh, we have a whole entire year left. 
you know, whatever, whatever the road led ahead. But you know what? We did have a few aha moments, especially for us as brakemen being so new to the sport. You know, when we finally got to, after our, our first race in Park City, we were like, oh, so this is how it's done. Because we're like, how are we going to get in the sled? But it's like, we're going to figure it out. We expect to be competitive. Um, we got in this sport thinking that, you know, um, there were processes to get to where we need to be. Now we're where we need to be, and now it's time to compete, get stronger, get faster, get prepared for the Olympic Games, and, you know, give them a good, you know, run at this. No African nation have ever competed at the both sled event. Hopefully these girls will be able to make history. Not just competing, but the fact that they can go ahead at least, take a shot. At the medal, it's not impossible, right? It's not, and uh, these girls are getting popular by the day. They've been uh, featured on a lot of uh, news media outlets. Uh, the other time I saw them on CNN, and I'm not saying that if they don't get a win, but they've made a mark. They're popular. They've achieved something that, um, in this part of the world, you know, a lot of us would have thought uh, impossible. They've put us on the map, shown you know that spirit that we've always wanted to see in Nigeria. That uh, we could be a multi-sport nation. Yeah. It would be better for us uh, if if we do that and you know you don't have to stay here if there are places where there are comparative advantage go there show the world that anywhere Nigerians are you know uh, we can do uh, but, but but the thing that follows what you just said is that the organizers are, are really worried that um, the, the weather conditions uh, by the time the 2018 winter games takes place the weather conditions might just not be favorable <laughs> uh, <laughs> <the opening> <laughs> <ceremony>. <laughs> <laughs> you know I, I'm looking I, I'm looking at that um, um, there's really nothing they can do about it, just hope for the best. Yeah, that's the thing, because if you take a look at some documents that leaked a while ago, what's the fact that you know, during that time, the way the weather is, is really freezing cold, and the stadium, the way it was constructed, there's no covering, uh, because they're trying to, you know, you know I mean, say phones, you know what I mean, so at the end of the day, it's not covered, so when you're having an opening ceremony, you're having all the best I mean, the world leaders will obviously be there, and it's open, freezing cold. Well, you just pray to God and have a better weather, because that freezing weather in Pyongyang at that time might just be a very, very difficult one for some of the athletes. Why not? These athletes, they've trained at a colder region to, you know, get used to it and all. But I'm talking about those world leaders who mm -hmm. want to come, you know, at the opening ceremony, just want to enjoy the game and all that. If they will be able to, you know, put everything together, and just enjoy the game without having to be thinking of, you know, freezing and all that. Well, 